Welcome back to another episode of Around Town. I'm your host, DW, and this is Teddy. Teddy, thanks so much for being here. I pulled up to a campground in Rapid City, and lo and behold, another Airstreamer was ni- right next to me, and he was nice enough. Tell us about his story and his Airstream. So, Teddy, tell us why you started Airstreaming. I started, I had some cancer stuff in 2018, 19. Just as I got better, the world shut down. I've been all over the world, about over 100 countries. Wow. And um, I've never, it's all personal travel, and I've never really seen the country I always wanted to. I had uh, a property I'd pretty much paid off in South Boston, decided to sell it, and I went out and found myself an Airstream and hit the road. How did you choose Airstream versus any other brand? What You already knew about them, you researched them. What brought you to Airstream? So um, I was familiar with them from when I was a kid. There was uh, one at a friend's house in the backyard. But uh, during, um, I think it was 2000, late 18 or 2019, I randomly ended up seeing someone, a woman from New Hampshire that was traveling in an Airstream. And I just started looking into them. And the, and and as you probably know, they hold their value. Yes, very um, well. And they're solid. They're lightweight. They tow really easy. And the more I kind of got in, I started getting onto Airstream forums. And the more I saw what was going on, um, uh, with the community, they just very tight knit. Everyone takes care of each other. I like doing maintenance. I like I'm a hands on kind of guy, and yes. so every, there was a forum there of how to take care of everything. Nice. So that just led me to Airstream. And you've been doing it for how long now? I've been out on the road for uh, about sixteen months, seventeen months actually. A year and a half. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And you've enjoyed every minute of that freedom. Uh, about 95% of the time I have inner peace and joy. <laughs> <laughs> is it easier and simpler to live in your Airstream versus a home or is it the same or is it based on mindset or what do you think? Does That's it- a great question. Um, it's a balancing act. There's, um, listen, I miss having a shop. Okay. I miss having a thousand square feet, obviously. Sure. Um, but this has been a totally different shift. I spent 23 years in the city and in Boston, in Boston. Wow. Um, and, um, and most of my adult life in, in cities or around close to cities. Um, I didn't necessarily could see myself really getting into nature. I wanted to see the national parks. I've been to all the seven wonders of the world. Wow. So I really wanted to see the parks around America I started out doing this. I was going to do it for a year. And at the three month mark, I realized I'm rushing and I didn't want to miss out. And so I decided I was going to do it for two years. And at the six month mark, I realized like I could do this forever, even though I know I can't, (laughs) like I could do this forever. You were so good at it and you enjoyed it so much that you said, I could just keep going. Yeah. It's just peace. It's, it's, um, you know, I meet people like yourself. Everyone out here is focused on the journey. A lot of us don't even know our next destination. Um, (laughs) That's you and and I. We don't know where we're going next. We're in Rapid City, right? I'm not sure. I said, neither am I. No clue. (laughs) People are just as... um, there's, there's There's no political war out here. There's no culture war out here. There's no... Um, gender war, everyone's just kind of doing their thing and, and everyone tends to be at peace right. and joy and focused on uh, um, what's, you know, what's down the road for them. Mm-hmm. Like we all struggle. We have issues that, you know, pop up that we have to deal with. I'm sure you've dealt with on your rig at some point that slow you down. You got your tools out here I today. Tools. Um, but, you know, you and one of my streamers just blew. That's what I told you. Right. I got to stream right. it to Utah. But I just, there's something about the freedom to roam. And um, and and the, uh, while I go to Airstream rallies, yes. I crash them yeah. most of the time. <laughs> um, I tend to vibe more with the Overlanders. Makes the, sense. The people who are just out off-gridding, boondocking. Sure. 
So let me ask you this. How long is your Airstream? What's the length? 25, 11. 25, 11? 25. Exactly. Yeah. So almost 26. Yeah. It's okay. 26. So what's the perfect size for one person on an Airstream? Is it 23, 20, 25, or is it different for everybody in your I opinion? I think it's different for everyone. I've seen people in 16s. I've seen people in 20s like yourself. Yes. Uh, this is perfect for me. This has been customized. Um, I, I removed the dinette. Uh, which they say can sleep too, but like maybe two kids or yeah. drunk adults. Um, and I put a high desk in, I put all my Victron equipment in there and my, and my, um, uh, my lithium batteries. I pulled out the couch in front and there's now a, a big U shaped booth, which has wide open storage, a table that drops down to a California King plus if need be. I think this is perfect for me. This size, 25 huh. foot, it gets me into most national parks. It's a good size. It's, um, as I, I mentioned to you earlier, I bought a 34 footer, triple axle. Airstream. Airstream. First, that was your first one. Yes. Right out of the gate after, um, right after I sold my house, typical man brain, I'm like, I got this. And then once I got the truck and I got the pro pride hitch, I'm like, I'm going to die. I cannot <laughs> go this around the country. That's a big rig. That's a very big That's rig. That's a big and rig. It took me a year to find this. So you bought the big yeah, trailer, you big bought it, and then yeah, what did you realize? I realized it was too big for me. Like, I, I can't tow a 34-footer around that's the country. A, that's a lot. It's a big tail. There's a big swing yeah. going in. Uh, like I, That's a lot I of wanna, trailer. Yeah, I want to be off-grid. You can't be towing that size trailer through washouts, deserts, etc. cetera. Um, so, so what's your advice to somebody looking to – you bought two Airstreams. Yeah. And there's a – I think a lot of people say – buy the buy the airstream you really want the first time don't go small and then go bigger you yeah. did it reverse so what one tip would you give people looking to get an airstream who've never bought a travel trailer or airstream um get on airstream forums i got a couple get on airstream forums read about them okay. understand what you're getting into okay um watch a video and, like this get yeah, on youtube watch a video like this exactly I, I did a lot of due diligence gotcha. a lot of research about it and go out and know what you're looking for read it's more important to know um, the pitfalls of certain airstreams, how they're taken care of. I knew when I, I spent an hour, I, I went to the owner of this. He's building generational wealth. Wow. Um, and I said to him, I need an hour with this thing. And he's like, I haven't cleaned it yet. It had been on the market for a while. Um, he said, I, I said, I don't care if it's cleaned. I want to look at the bones and I, okay. I said, give me an hour with it. It was in storage. I walked around, he came back. He started kind of pointing out some stuff. I'm like, I've seen what I need to say. You were sold. And I was sold. You know, and okay. at that point we negotiated. I didn't really, I negotiated them down a little bit, but I ended up paying more for this Airstream than the people who bought it in 2005. Wow. That's incredible. So are you, independently wealthy and you're not having to work or no. are you working on the road i'm working i you're just work have a security i have some other streams of of income that i'm working on as well great do you what hours are you working for the cyber security you set your own hours or you have yeah, to be I set my own on, hours. so you don't have to be online from a certain time to a certain time i do yeah like i have to get up and read reports uh, okay. i have a smaller kind of niche um and i have some people that work with me i don't necessarily have employees yes um so um i there are times that I have to work when there's yeah. problems, mm -hmm. but a lot of the times I can take a day off if I want and go explore. Um, I work on the rig a lot. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, as long as I have phone service or yes. internet when I'm here, yes, I can do my job. You're good to go. Yeah. Do you keep a daily schedule routine or you say, I'm in an Airstream, I'm a nomad, I just do what I want, when I want, with no set schedule? Or do you wake up in the morning and have a set schedule? Great question. A little bit of both. I'm more of a slow mad rather than bounce from place to place. I prefer to kind of go and settle down for a week somewhere, or maybe two weeks. Slow mad. <laughs> I'm going to spell that out on the screen for everybody. I've never heard that. Slow mad. There is a, uh, there is a girl that calls herself slow roamer. So that's I interesting. Okay. I know so, her. I, I used to follow her. Nice. So explain that to people. What does that mean you do? So I... Slow mad. I'm, I'm not bouncing around and, and I'm not knocking it, but there are people that spend a day or two, they go to this and then they go to the next place and then they go to the next place. 
And, um, and it's almost like a checklist. It's and hard. So, so I have a morning, I have a routine in the sense that I get up in the morning. Um, you know, I have three, I'm a creature of habit. So I get up, I make my bed. Um, you know, I, I have, um, I have, three different breakfasts that I make. I'll do yoga. I'll come out and stretch in the sun, get some vitamin D. Um, and, and I have a, a, a master, a huge master task list of stuff I want to get done on this as well as work. And before I go to bed at night, I have the first three things that I want to get accomplished. So I come right out of the gate mm. and then productive. Um, so you write down before you go to sleep, yeah. three things that, that you for sure want to get done the next day. Yeah. That are, that are, wow. Okay. And depending on, listen, if, if it doesn't always work out because sometimes stuff comes up, sometimes yeah. work comes up. I don't have a strict schedule yes. as far as, um, as for, you know, other than a, like a morning routine and a nightly routine, I make sure everything is clean before I go to bed. My dishes are done. And so I'm getting up in the morning to an organized, and, and I can't say 100% of the time, but 99% of the time, I wake up in a clean kind of organized environment that it's, listen, it's a small space. You know this. Sure. And it can get out of control sure. really quickly. quick. Quickly. So clean before you go to bed, organize, and then have three key tasks you're going to do the next morning. Those two linchpins really help your day go smooth. Yes, very much so. Your Airstream's beautiful. It's 25 feet long. Have She's you... dirty. <laughs> it's still beautiful. I like it. I like everything about it. She's dirty. <laughs> have you modified it in any way? I know you've yes. probably done some little things, but have you done any major modifications? Yes. Okay, so, what have you done? Um, uh, modifications. As I said, I pulled out, I put a high desk in there with all my, um, with, with a drawer. Okay. Um, it's only 18 inches deep by pulling out the, uh, by pulling out the dinette, the galley way is much wider. I can put a yoga mat out. Okay. I, I crashed the Burning Man camp at the Airstream Burning Man camp. Sure. By the way, I'm not a big druggy guy, but there's like doctors. It was an excellent experience. Nice. Okay. Um, but I had one point I was napping in the back and there was a couple people in the front cause I had the air conditioning going because yeah. I had a generator and I came out and there was seven people sitting in the booth. Someone else came out. I went out. I start, I woke up. I started making a charcuterie board. A woman came in. She took over the charcuterie board. I started making smoothies. There was nine of us and we were up. Us two were operating in the kitchen without any issues. Because of that modification. Yeah. Very nice modification. What's something else you've modified on your Airstream? I have a thousand kilowatts on the roof. Solar. Wow. I have 600 amp hours. I have, um, of batteries, yep, 600 amp hours lithium. of lithium batteries. Lipo four. Um, I have, uh, the Victron, uh, converter inverter charger. I have the, um, uh, the Orion, which allows me to do DC to DC from the truck. Okay. Um, nice. I have two solar charges. Okay. Um, uh, one is, uh, a backup, obviously, and the other is uh, right over there behind you. You don't have to look, but oh yeah, um, there's two panels, ground panels so that can, I have. So you can because, deploy it. Yeah, at this time of year, with the sun being south, you can actually get, I by by like ten o'clock in the morning, those are nine BV. I can be getting 180 sure watts out of those, and they're two, and they're two 100 watt panels, 50 percent out of two panels that I can out of 10 panels. That's right. So having a deployable solar panel Must. is a big help. Yes. Just because you have a ton on the roof, yep. still it doesn't do the job this time of year or when the sun's at an angle. In the, sun, well, listen, yeah. in the summertime, You're good. it does the job. Right. But you can't the, run the air conditioner. I have an sure. easy start sure. in the air conditioner, but you you can't keep up with it. Sure. Yeah. You. That's why you carry the generator. Yep. Your tow vehicle is a Chevy truck, yep. 1500 yep. gas burner. What yep. kind of mileage do you get towing? Um, so Average. I've done a lot of work to it. Okay. I'm actually getting better with without towing. I'm getting better than it came from the factory, but I put wow. a air intake on it. Okay. So on flat highways, I can get about 12.7 okay. towing. She weighs about, I'm towing between, depending on whether the tanks are full or not, I'm towing between 63 and 68. Um, her 100 pounds her, yeah and 100 pounds uh her limit is 7300 7345 i actually lightened it up okay by pulling out the couch and pulling out the dinette right 
Um, I'm about to lift it three inches like yours is lifted. Yes, okay. Because um, my uh, my dump valves are close. One good washout. And it'd be ripped and, off. Um, and I ruined all three tanks. Wow. So, so what do you think your average in miles per gallon towing? I would say, um, you know, listen, it, when you go into Colorado, up and down, up and down, up and down. Sometimes it's high tens. But... Um, you know, on, on flat stretches, I'm, I, I've got as high as 12.7 on a That's, trip of 400 miles. I'm finding most everybody, no matter their tow vehicle or yeah. their truck or vehicle that pulls it, everybody's average in between 8 and 12. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're in a 2,500 F-250 or whatever. That's people are right. about 8 to 12, so I that makes sense. Put in, so she, my truck's got 130,000 miles on it. Wow, okay. Um, but I'm a car guy. I've done everything on it consistently transmission fluids yes uh, um uh, rear axle fluid mm -hmm. so um i use that lucas um gas treatment okay and i've been using that religiously for 30 40 years okay um what screws up a lot of engines is the ethanol yes and that helps resolve it and whenever i'm towing mm -hmm. i put a bottle of stp octane boost in and it's like 5.99 at walmart and so i buy four or five bottles. I'd love to buy a case of it, but I don't need a case of jet fuel in my yeah, truck. Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I dump one of those in as well. And then I'll put like 85 or 87 in. And I'm also the slowest guy on the road. Yeah. You, you're, you're a smart and safe tower. That's yeah, fine. I'm, I'm in you're not in a rush. Lane. No. And I, you know, maybe I'll catch 70 to 70 miles an hour going down a hill, but I'm usually towing between 60, 65 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, slow and, mad. Yeah, slow mad. And, <laughs> and so I'm not, you know, and a lot of people tow when they're going up hills. Um, they try to, they, when you're towing up hills, you're better off keeping the RPMs higher. It, the engine will sound loud, but you're better off keeping it between 3,500 and 4,500 RPM. Okay. Because when you're doing that, what's happening is the engine's spinning faster. So you're actually getting the, watch it, there's a cat behind you just so it doesn't scare you. It's not a wild animal. <laughs> um, so you've, You've, Thank you. Um, so you've got the, I don't know whether you have it, but on the front uh, radiator, I have the supplemental transmission radiator up by the radiator on the front. Um, that's just curious. She's going to go <laughs> in my rig. Watch this. She's going right in. Yep. You're um, welcome to get her. <laughs> no, I don't care. Animals are love, man. So keep the RPMs high. So, yeah, so, so what advice would you have? For someone starting out, considering living on the road or being a slow mad or nomad, what would you say now that you have this amount of knowledge, 16 months worth, and all the tinkering and the upgrades and the driving and all the states you've been to? Yeah. So what advice would you give somebody who's thinking about it? They're at home. They're in an apartment. It's cold. You and I are standing here in Rapid City, and we're doing it. We, we got challenges. And it's, it's not easy. It's warm. Oh, man. I'm wearing this jacket, but it was like 61 degrees today, I yeah, think. Yeah, 65. I am wearing shorts. I don't know if they can see. I don't know if they can see. 70 tomorrow. I'm going to go boondocking, so, I think. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, and you just touched on something. I had to come to San Diego for uh, from South Dakota for business. Okay. And I wasn't thrilled about coming up here last minute. Right. But when I got here, two days later... It was gonna. It was seventy. It was sixty-eight degrees last Saturday. It was seventy-two. I went yeah. to the Badlands and boondocked. Yeah, it's great and weather. So um, keep open-minded. Understand. You see a lot of people talking about van life and full-time RVing, and it can seem really, you know, glossed over. What a lot of us do on social media. Glamorous. Glamorous, and it's all fun. It's not all fun. There's a lot of stress sometimes. Um, I'm a, I'm a guy and I've been all over the world, so I don't get shaken easy. Mm -hmm. um, I can fix almost anything. I'm a MacGyver type, so I don't worry about stuff breaking. Right. But just keep reasonable expectations when you go ah, out. Um, learn. Don't overbuy stuff. Like I bought stuff that I'm getting rid of now. Um, I took way too many clothes to begin with. Um Purging clothes. I carry more tools than clothes. Um, um, just understand that there's a learning curve, and um, and sometimes it can take three months. Sometimes it can take six months. And just don't expect every day to be a bed of roses, and it's going to be great. There are going to be moments that you that 
meet your expectations. There are going to be moments that you have unmet expectations. And then there's going to be moments like this when I come up here where I was not looking forward to it. It was unseasonably warm in the 70s. I went out to the Badlands and it was like me and six people out there. Uh, and I had it to myself, yeah. basically camping on the cliff. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. How neat. You never know how things are going to work out. So they're sitting at home. They're considering it. They're nervous. They don't want to give up their home. But if they can work remote, if they have the ability to work remote, yeah. or they have the money and they just want to see the country, is it a good time to get out and do it yes. right now? Yes. And why? It is. You, yes is the answer. Yes. Okay. Um, why so. is yes the answer? Um, we're here. I hope it's a good time because we're because here. I think the, <laughs> Because I think we can all use a break sometimes in the world. And I had said this to you before. Um, it's just a different vibe out here. It's, it's, it, everyone's focused on the journey. No one's focused on the destination. Right. Um, there's so, no political war. There's no culture war. There's no gender war. Um, seems like you feel more relaxed out here on the road. Uh, this is the quietest my mind has been for the longest period of time in forever. Wow. So, and so, I think it's the gas prices will have spiked last year, but they're starting to come down. And, um, you know, um, don't overbuy like I did. You can, it, listen, it's better off to find the right rig the first time, obviously, you know, and you don't have to buy an Airstream. There's some really good Coleman's now making, I just looked at it. Coleman's sure. making a $24,000 brand new rig. Wow. That's a great, and Coleman's making a pretty good, they make pretty good products. Right. They're good brand name. Um, you know, twenty four thousand dollars, and you know you can tow it. You don't need a twenty five hundred. I'm towing this with a fifteen hundred. Cargo is my kryptonite. Yeah. So I you can, carry a lot of stuff. Is what I do. Yeah. So I can tow ninety six hundred pounds with that because right. it has the G thirty sure. transmission. It has the right axle, but um, how much I can put into my cargo. That's my kryptonite. That's smart. That seems like a smart idea. I like that. But you love your Airstream. Love it. You've had very few problems with it. You're able to fix most things. Yes. Has your Airstream been into any Airstream shop? Have you had to take no. it? I haven't been. No. So it's been reliable. <laughs> your experience on the road has been good. The Airstream's been reliable. You're happy. You told me in a prior conversation, yeah. you said, I would do this forever if I could, but I know I can't. Yeah. What is the can't part of why you cannot? Why did you say that? Um, uh, so I had a, a, a double groin issue during the pandemic. It didn't get addressed. I'm probably going to need hip surgery at some point, which is going to mean mm -hmm. rehab for six months. Ideas that are coming into place, which is going to, um, which is going to, um, it, it, it's going to make me have to kind of be in a spot for at least a couple weeks, three weeks, gotcha. a month. Um, I'll, Always have a rig. Always have. I'll always be traveling. I love it. Uh, the solar we've talked about is the solar off gridding homestead type stuff. So you got a you got a big future, but you're all always going to have the airstream. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So tell people where they can follow you, your Instagram or anything you got. Feel free to share it with everybody. Um, your Instagram yeah. is airstream underscore alley a l l i e. Um, also in search of seventy three. I don't post a lot. Okay. I mentioned this to earlier. Yeah. I, have a, I don't know whether the human race had evolved enough for social media. You know, every couple months, I don't put a lot of my stuff out there. Okay. Um, but I'm not on any other social media. I don't. You're just out traveling, media. enjoying life. Yeah, I just, I film a lot of the upgrades that I'm doing. I did all my window seals. I just did the weather stripping on the refrigerator. Um, I, I've i filmed my, doing my solar. Um, nice. Tons of stuff. Um and I, every you, time I start to decide, hey, I got to post this, I just look at things of projects that I want to get done. Yeah. And I just enjoy working on my hands. So I end up going back onto that. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that I've filmed out in the Badlands, I have some great footage, drone footage, regular footage, right. uh, camera, I have a couple of nice cameras. Yes. You know, that stuff is in 
time sensitive. I can do that six months from now, sure. a year from now. Sure. You're just enjoying the adventure. Yeah, so you're living. Kind of you're doing, doing good. Thing. You're a heck of a nomad. Yeah. You've yeah. got a lot. You've taught me a couple of things. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me because I know you're busy with projects. That's okay. I'm going to see you down the road. There I have a good are. feeling. To everybody watching, thank you so much. I appreciate the time of this awesome nomad. We're going to have more episodes in the future. Follow him on Instagram. And if you're thinking about getting out on the road, definitely do it. Do it. Don't be scared. Get out there. You'll meet nice people. I'm in Rapid City. I rolled into this small, little, tucked away, unique campground, and boom, we met each other for this interview. So, yeah. so nice. Very nice We've meeting seen you. each other. We've been here four or five days. We see each other and a couple we, times. We talk for five minutes here, 15 minutes here, it's, and then we it's just go just, our own way. Just living our we life out on the road. I watch yours. Just it's a good. couple nomads. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah, taking the time welcome. to do the interview. Appreciate it. Stay tuned. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. We will see you next time.